Hi everyone, Paul Schmutzler here with a demo today of the Boris Continuum set of plugins. This is version 10 of Boris Continuum. Many of you are probably already familiar with the name Boris. It's a, it's a pretty well-known name in post-production. Professionals have used it in Avid for many years. It's also available now in Premiere Pro and After Effects. Today I'm going to be demoing everything in Premiere Pro, but most of what you see are also available for After Effects. A few of the plugins are only available in After Effects, but we're going to limit this tutorial to what you can do in Premiere Pro, which is most of what's offered by Boris in this set of plugins anyway. So for my sample footage, I'm using some kayaking footage that I shot a couple of years ago for another review, and it works pretty well for a lot of the filters and transitions that I want to show you today. So let's start with this clip here. You'll notice that there's a really nice lens flare up in the corner, which is not all natural, although it is simply enhanced from a real lens flare. This is without the lens flare effect that I've added from Boris, and this is with it on. You'll notice with all of the plugins that are available with the Continuum set, there are a million different things you can change to tweak, to tweak these effects. Um, just this one right here for the lens flare has so many different options that I won't get into re really. You can tweak and tweak until it doesn't look anything like a lens flare if you really want to. But for now I've already got this set up to pretty much what I want and I'll explain why. First of all, let me point out this right here. Every one of these plugins in the Boris Continuum set has this little interface with these buttons. Load and save or for, are for loading and saving your own presets, uh, which you can share with others. If you're on a network and you have a storage area network or some sort of server that you have several different editors sharing or visual effects guys sharing, you can share those on a network storage and be able to access them through this interface right here so that if somebody makes one that you really like they don't have to put it on your computer you can just get to it over the network. The help button will launch a help that's offline in your browser but it won't just go to Boris Continuum Help. It actually goes to the Help section on the plugin that you're using. So if I click this right now, it's going to launch the Lens Flare 3D Help, but then easily enable me to get to the rest of the Help file if I need it. License Control and Purchase just have to do with your license that you've purchased or maybe you haven't purchased for the plugins. Preferences, there's not really much to that except basically turning on OpenCL and then being able to, when you load the Pixel Chooser mask, we'll already have a preset assigned. We'll get to Pixel Chooser here in a little bit. The FX browser I'll get to also in a little bit. That is something unique to BCC, which I really like. Um, you can access your presets right here with a essentially a drop-down menu to just choose from one of the pre-made presets for this particular plugin, or you can simply scroll through them by using the up and down buttons, and that will just cycle through what's in this list here. But I've already customized this to what I want and I'll explain what I've done. First of all I positioned it to approximately where the actual Sun is. You'll notice that it's slightly off. The real Sun is actually over here but there's a reason I put it over here and that's because if you look a few frames ahead you'll find that the guy's ore goes right through that area but it doesn't go through where the actual Sun is. When that ore goes through that light I wanted it to be like a little flash now I didn't have to animate that. Under the Obscuration map layer, I chose Video 1 because that's what's on the, la on the track there. And then I made it to whatever looked the best, which for me was RGB. You'll notice that even as I scrub through the earlier frames, that light moves just a little bit. It kind of flickers and glows and grows a little bit. And then when the ore comes through it, there's a little bit of a flash where it gets brighter right there. The glow expands in the center. I wanted that because I wanted it to look like as this ore passes through that, it's like it's cutting the sun and it's, the light is shining through the ore. And you can see the actual sun is already shining through the ore. Right there, it's a lighter red. So I wanted to just kind of play on that and enhance that by having the flare interact with this ore. So that was very easy to do without having to custom animate some effect with a bunch of keyframes. I just turned on a few options and bam, there it was. And it looks convincing enough for a really quick shot just as it goes by. The next effect I want to show you uses the planar tracker found in Mocha. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Boris bought Mocha a while back and now they incorporate that into their plugins. 
most of the effects that you can use in the continuum set will have this mocha button down near the bottom where you can launch its own interface. And you can see there's a lot to this. You can make in and out points to only select areas that you're using in the clip. But otherwise, by default, it loads the entire clip. So it doesn't just have the in and out point that we were just looking at. So if I want to get to approximately where it starts, uh, I've already put the mask here, which you can see, so I know about where we're going. But if I get to right there, I can select my mask, which I created with the spline tool found here in the interface. And you can see there's my first keyframe that I started with. So this is about where the clip starts. And I created the mask around his face, really simply, just click, 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 click. And then I used the tracking forward to follow his face as it went through the rapids. Now you can see right here and here, I've got new keyframes. Those are there because as he got into this shadow and he got close to this darker tone of rock, the shade of his face and the shade of the rock got really similar, so it lost it and got stuck on the rock. So all I had to do was stop, back up a few frames to where it was back on his face, track forward again, or sometimes track backwards, and it would find it again and pick it right up from there. And then as you can see, it lost it again as it got farther down, and then I had to pick it up again and make another keyframe. So after I've done all that, it saves the tracking information, so I can close this interface. You just click the little save icon, close it out, and now that tracking information is on that particular effect. The good thing is I can now apply that to just about any effect I want and just say, hey, use this mask that I created in Mocha and follow it. So in this case, I wanted to use what they call the witness protection effect, and I wanted it to use the mosaic effect, not the blur. Blur would just be a standard blur. A mosaic gives it a more of a pixelated appearance, and that's what I wanted to go with. And as far as the shape, I just choose the pixel chooser because that's what's down here with Mocha. It's called pixel chooser slash Mocha. And then under pixel chooser, you can also choose default shapes for the mask. And in this case, it's already chosen the Mocha spline that I created because it knows that I went in and customized it. Otherwise, I could make a default shape like an egg, which is designed to closely approximate the shape of someone's face so it gets you started off in the right direction but I've already made a custom one for him so I'm going to go back to that and you can see that I have this nice blurry pixelated face going down the rapids now. The next effect is an interesting blur. Um, it goes kind of along with our witness protection effect that we just used in that uh, it would be used on my next true crime documentary to make my reenactment look a little more convincing, or maybe a little less convincing. I'm not sure why they always do that. But anyway, I turned on this temporal blur, which gives it a weird kind of a frame delay sort of appearance. Kind of dreamy, everything kind of blurs together uh, frame over frame. And again, you have a lot of different options for the amount of blur, the amount, number of frames, the frame separation that you might want in there as well. The next effect that I applied kind of went along with the previous clip in that it gave it a kind of a dreamy appearance. This is the shot without the effect on there. I'll just play that back for you. You can see there's a slight camera move. It's going, it's dialing to the right and it's going on a slight incline. So it's very smooth, kind of pastoral. It's gotten past the wildness of the rapids that came in the clip before it. And now it's like, ah, okay, we're through the worst of it. This is a lot smoother now. So I want to do enhance that by tr using this glint feature and I actually ended up using one of the presets that they had in here which was the intense vertical streaks and once again you can just go up and down through these presets to choose exactly what you want and I customized that after I chose the preset I customized it in reducing the amount of streaks because it was completely blowing out the image before but I also didn't want him to be blown out if you notice if I turn off the mask that I've got which is down here he gets blown out and turned into kind of a white mess like the rest of the image does. But I wanted him to still stand out a little bit, so I turned on a mask that I created once again in Mocha, which you can see here. And if I scrub forward, you'll find where he goes into frame, and I actually created it around the entire kayak, his oars and everything, and once again went through the tracking process where it follows him out of the frame. So that way, when he's in this image, if I just turn some feathering on, it still shows right around him, but it doesn't completely cover him up, so you can see this, the main subject in there. So that's some of the effects, and now let's move on to the transitions. The first one I used here is actually, is actually an older transition that they've had in there for a while, but it can be used really effectively on a couple of things. 
for one thing, I've got two overhead shots in a row here. I've got this one, and then it ends up on the other side of the bridge looking down. So it goes from one side of the bridge, he passes under, and he's on the other. So to transition between those, since they're not distinctly different, I wanted to kind of just ooze from one to the other by using the lens transition that's included in here. So it's as if the lens just slowly goes all the way out of focus and then comes back in, but when it comes back in, you're on a completely different shot. But because the imagery is so similar in these two shots, it blends nicely because you don't see where the green changes as easily because it blends in with the river up at the top corner here. So I thought that worked well to transition between these two. The next clip it goes to is back down on the ground is hitting a little bit more of a stronger rapids and I chose to go with just something kind of weird in this case, which is the cross glitch. This is one of the new effects that you'll find in version 10. And again, this has many different options that you can tweak, but in my case, I left it as the default just to see what happened. And this is what that looks like. So you can spend a lot of time in After Effects trying to manually create something like this, especially when it covers a transition between clips. But the ability to be able to just throw this on there and then tweak it to make it look how you want is a huge time saver. And then the last one I pulled out here was another new one in version 10, which is a light leaks dissolve, which gives you the whole idea of uh, a little bit of a, a light burning your negative if you're working with film. Um, that's a lot harder to pull off when you're working with digital. So they've uh, created this to be able to pull off an old analog effect with the new digital technology. And this has multiple generators that you can pull from. I've got all four turned on right now, but you can reduce the number that you want to get just the right look that you need. And then, of course, you'll want to render most of these depending on the machine that you're on. But we can scrub through and kind of see basically what it looks like. The last effect that I used, I, I found a subject that really needed some help in the uh, beauty department. You may recognize this guy, and if you don't, that's fine. The beauty studio found in BCC 10 is pretty handy for a lot of things. In this case, I have some 1280 by 720 footage that I shot at 60 frames, and it's not great quality. It was just kind of a real quick little thing I had to get done. And you can see I've got a lot going on on my face. There's a lot of pores, creases, wrinkles, moles, stubble, etc. that normally isn't very flattering. So I easily just turned on the Beauty Studio, chose this strong smoothing effect, and voila, it completely got rid of all the imperfections except for the darkest side of my face, and when that light comes on, it really goes away. And then looking at it on screen here, you can see it doesn't really do too much to hurt the sharpness of the image. For example, my shirt here is nice and crisp still, so it doesn't overly blur everything, and it doesn't also blow out anything. It just gives it a nice smoothing effect to help the facial appearance look a little better. So that's just a handful of the effects found in BCC Continuum 10. The last thing I want to show you is, a, is kind of an effect and kind of not an effect at the same time. It's actually the BCC browser. And this to me is one of the most interesting features of the entire package. If you look for the browser and apply it to an effect, you'll see that nothing happens. But it does give you a button to launch this browser. And kind of like Mocha, there's an entire interface built into this that will launch inside of Premiere Pro. What this allows you to do is on whatever clip you have selected, you can go through the entire library of effects found in BCC 10 and you can quickly cycle through them and just kind of AB every single effect that's available. So I can go to perspective, I can go to this image shatter, and then I can choose play and I can just start cycling through them to see what they look like. And again, these are all playing in real time, no rendering. Some of them are a little bit lighter and some are a little bit heavier. So depending on your machine, you, it may struggle with some of these. I've found that to be the case with a lot of the ones that, especially the ones that are generating lights. So let's go to some of those and just show you. Uh, we'll go to edge lighting and we'll throw on this one here. You know, these would only be used in very specific situations, but it gives you an idea of how powerful this is. Um, that's one of the beauties of the, the uh, OpenCL processing that it can take advantage of. So if I wanted to play around with a blur, I could go here choose a fast lens blur and look here's all the presets and if I stop this it's going to give it a little more time to load all of these and I'll hit play again and then I can start cycling through them. You can see the blurs are a little bit more processor intensive um, so it's having trouble keeping up very well with that but 
it still gives you an idea. Even if you're only able to look at a still, you can figure out if it's close to what you want and then you can go find it. The one downside to this is you can't just apply it to the effect from the browser. You have to see what it is. Okay, I'm under fast lens blur and this is the, how do you pronounce that? Mirror lens preset. So I would close this. So I would get rid of the browser and then I go to lens blur, the fast lens blur, apply it to that and then I could go right in here and choose that one that I liked there, render it and I'm done. So that's the quick look at a few of the plugins, effects, and transitions available in Boris Continuum version 10, available now.